is an old TV. This is from like when we were kids. What happened there? Hmm. What happened oh, there? Oh, ball. wormhole. Tom's like, bye, dad. He's like, shut up. Shut up. You're fine. No way. I'm like fully a scientist, but I would believe ghosts before gravity. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm cool. You're the problem. Ready to talk about today's film? Let's get into it. Let's do it. Interstellar from 2014, science. So they just come up with a description of what science is. This is this is the dad. Is this science? Is, <laughs> is this, this science? This is Cooper. This is Cooper talking to, to the kids. Is this science? Well, it's not very scientific, Murph. You said science is about admitting what we don't know. Murph, you want to talk science? You got to record the facts, analyze, get to the how and the why, then present your conclusions. So he said, she she said that Cooper said that science is admitting what we don't know. I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> that seems to be a bit important aspect of science, but I'm not sure that's. I'm not sure that's. Yeah, science. I mean, I, mean <laughs> like, I could say I could say there's a lot of stuff that I don't know. Therefore, that's science. <laughs> yeah, I could say I'm I don't know everything. Therefore, science. Ma yeah, master level scientist. I don't know anything. Done. That's all. That's Done. actually all you need to do to get a master's. You just, just publicly <laughs> declare you don't know anything. You don't know anything. What do you think about that thing? I don't know. What do you think know. about that thing? That's scientist. Scientist right, right here. Right here. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Does Coop know what science is? <laughs> this is like a grossly over, uh, right. grossly understatement to the kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, then he says, you got to get to the how and the why. Is that science? Gosh, um, in principle, no. Why should be not a question that scientists answer. Right. Why questions are philosophical. Are very philosophical and very, very difficult. It often leads to like infinite whys right. that are hard to deal with. So That are loaded with perspective, which right. as scientists, we try to be irrespective of personal perspective. Okay. So maybe someday we can answer some why questions, but... Seems like we're pretty far away from those why questions right now. Are you saying that you are publicly declaring that you don't know stuff? I do not. I yeah, it's, yeah, been trained well. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> That's science. Yeah. Murphy's law. Why did you and mom name me after something that's bad? No, well, we didn't. Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law doesn't mean that something bad will happen. What it means is that whatever can happen will happen. And that sounded just fine with us. Is that what Murphy's Law is? So, so my understanding of Murphy's Law is it's kind of like an engineer's joke. That when they're like building something or trying to do some sort of operation, they're like, something's going to go wrong, Murphy's Law. But it's not like a real law about mm. risk and like failure rates and stuff no that's like statistics this is like oh like a joke law not like a real thing you know when you're actually making something running something operating something something's gonna go wrong you mm -hmm. don't always know what murphy's law mm -hmm. it's so, not like like um what is that law with like the computer chips they're getting growing at some rate moore's law Moore's law. Moore's law is like an empirical, like not, it's not a law in that it's like, it has to be this way, but mm -hmm. it's the trend of how things go over time. Right. Murphy's law. So it's like a serious statement, right? But Murphy's law is like a joke statement where it's like mm -hmm. something crazy is going to happen. It's going to happen, but like, it's not like a, right. an actual like, thing, not an actual concept other than having fun. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. yeah. So can we, can we look it up? Is Murphy's law on Wikipedia? Let's find it. Let's find out. What does it say? Murphy's Law is an adage or epigram that is typically stated right. as anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And some formulations is extended to anything that can go wrong will go wrong and at the worst possible time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not, not very scientific. Ah. <laughs> An American aerospace engineer, Edward A. Murphy, Murphy Jr., is exact origins are debated. Hmm. Mm. Generally agreed upon the origin from Murphy and his team following a mishap during a rocket sled test. Mm. 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 So they just like threw their hands up in the air. Murphy's law, something's going to Murphy's go law. Some shit's going to happen. When did it go wrong? Exactly when we didn't want it to go wrong. Of course. Yep. Murphy's it's always law. like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So if they named her, their kid after Murphy's law, it's like a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be super fun yeah right yeah <laughs> yeah because it's like an unplanned pregnancy so it's like it, it happened murphy's law that's murphy's right law let's call her murphy let's call her murphy yeah we don't want her <sighs> Ooh, 
no, he loves her. He does. Yeah, absolutely, he does. So I was thinking, and this this is a classroom scene for the PTA conference. Look at this old TV. This is from like when we were kids. When the That's teachers right. would teachers would wheel it in when they didn't want to do any real work. That's right. This is like early nineties <laughs> when they need to catch up on the grading, grading like elementary school kids stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they have these like giant televisions they would wheel yeah. it in. Super small, couldn't see anything, but like physically large. Mm-hmm. So I know that they've taken in this society they've taken some sort of technological step backwards. And they're having mm. population problems, food problems, but they're not going to get rid of like LCD, LED TVs in favor of cathode ray tube TVs, right? That's right. Because like, gosh, how far backwards did they slide? So, Mer- so not Cooper, Cooper says that if there were still MRI machines, then they would have found the tumor in his wife's brain. But like, so they re- they they dialed back technology, but like dialing back to like the early nineties, like that's a pretty it's pretty bad. <laughs> like, like I can't, I can't go back at least, at least 1080p. Like this television is not showing me that. Right. Does anybody even make CRT televisions anymore? So they'd have to like fire up the old assembly lines that don't work. Like it's not, that's not <laughs> worth it. I, gosh, I, I suspect that the assembly lines are just, are, are gone now. Like They're nobody gone. even makes these anymore, which means that this television is like an expensive commodity. Like this mm-hmm. actually might be a very rich school. They bought like one of the final CRTs left. Look at this JVC. Mm. And so all of the LED and modern TVs are totally kaput. And this TV, the only ones that lasted are CRTs. They don't make TVs anymore. I mean, this is probably a color TV, just yeah. looking at the age, you know, 90s, right? Yeah. But why would they trust this television and not go even further, like, into black and white? Yeah, okay, let's go back know. to radio. Let's, let's stop trusting technology. Yeah, let's just not use the TV at this point. Yeah, let's go back to sticks and writing stuff in the dirt. I don't even trust paper. Right, let's, <laughs> there, there, there's no limit to this. But yeah, let's just regress back to monkeys. That's right. <laughs> they just, just yes, yeah, the invention of, of language. No, f- that. That's technology. Yeah. So we. I mean, that's how absurd that this TV being here is. That's right. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. A lot of good memories though. In school, school days where we just watch yeah. television. Watch television. Yeah. You're a well-educated man, Coop, and a trained pilot. And an engineer. We don't need more engineers. We didn't run out of television screens and planes. We ran out of food. Wait, wait, wait. The world wait, wait, needs... Wait, wait. What is he talking about? We don't need engineers? Engineers don't just make TVs and airplanes. And like electronics and like cell phones. Like yeah. Engineers do lots of stuff. Right. In fact, on Cooper's farm... There's tractors and like equipment and who is designing right. and manufacturing <laughs> these right. things? That's right. That's right. Is, <laughs> is he saying that farmers made the machines? Like, no, some company made this and the engineers dialed it in. It's worse than that. It's, the, these are not just dumb old tractors. These are operated by mm-hmm. computer chips. Like, like the, these these tractors in particular. Are like, <laughs> when 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 there's a problem, they like they're like solve a problem. They drive themselves back home. They're not just dumped out in a field somewhere. Right. These are super smart. Like an engineer dialed this shit in. Right. And so engineers are massive contributors to the food output of society. So it's not That's that we right. don't need fewer engineers and more farmers. We need both. We need engineers. In fact, these these tractors, these tractors are outside farming all day while Cooper is at this parent teacher conference. So like so one engineer is doing the job of four combine four I don't know what are these machine tractors, combine, mm-hmm. something like this. Yeah. And so like even more engineers. Right. It make it, it, it. Oh, I don't know what teacher. To say. Oh, this teacher. He doesn't he, there's no way Super it's wrong. just so blind. Cool statements, though, about being like a caretakers. Let's listen more. Mm-hmm. These farmers, we're a caretaker generation. Ah, it's like we've forgotten who we are now. Explorers, pioneers, not caretakers. Well, we used to look up in the sky and wonder at our place in the stars. Now we just look down and worry about our place in the dirt. Heavy statement. But it's yeah. right. It's right though. Like different times during human evolution, we needed different things. Mm-hmm. Like we needed a lots of explorers and sailors during the maritime time during the age of exploration. We need a lot of tech people now that we're doing lots of technology. And before that, we needed a bunch of industrial revolution times. So it's it's this a fascinating concept to think of like in science fiction, what might what might the world, what might humanity need at the time in which you're born? 
you don't necessarily get the job that you want. That's right, because Cooper wants to be an explorer with NASA and an astronaut and doing all these rockets, and he wants to do all that. But society's having food and technology problems, population problems, and so just doesn't have the bandwidth to do that. So he has to be mm -hmm. a farmer. He's a part yep. of the caretaker generation. There's no nothing he can do about it. Right. And and to make it even more extreme is if it's if he was born 200 years in the in the past, like space exploration is not even a concept at all. Like you may have that's this right. spirit, this heart, this will in you, but you mm -hmm. just, just not in the cards. That's right. And even if he got born like optimally during the space race in the 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, there's so few people actually went into space. He could have the desire, but maybe he doesn't just make didn't, the cut. Didn't have, didn't make the cut, or just didn't have the luck. He could have been an Did, excellent astronaut. Right. But just didn't cross the street the right day. I don't know. Hard yeah, to yeah, yeah, say. Yeah. yeah. So he wants to be in this place where there's like exploration on mass scales mm, but mm -hmm. it's not in the cards what's in the cards thing. caretaker generation caretaker, sometimes, farming. sometimes you got to do what your species needs for you mm -hmm. yeah sad sad but also like super cool idea of like mm -hmm. generational generation wide needs for society yeah the Apollo missions were fake to bankrupt the Soviet Union. You don't believe we went to the moon? I believe it was a brilliant piece of propaganda that the Soviets bankrupted themselves, pouring resources into rockets and other useless machines. It, this felt weird to me that this was brought up by the teacher. Like, what, what, what kind of society is this? It seems, and it also seems out of tone of the movie. Where did this come from? I see. Yeah, yeah. Because because the tone of the movie is about going into space, and here's this teacher saying like, "No, space is all fake." I see it. So so my my read on this is mm -hmm. that the society was was like opulent and and just growing and ex and and mm -hmm. and inventing and just technology left and right, um, but they didn't have the right technology to fight off the blight, the 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 whatever parasite, the mm -hmm. I don't know fungus whatever whatever is going around killing all the crops mm -hmm. and so then as a backlash the society writ large was like technology bad no let's go back to the old ways we survived for so long in the old ways it must have been the new things that was bad even though new things were were great and so part of that is like denying the space race denying all that stuff was that, that didn't happen mm -hmm. it's like it's also functional for that society the society that lives in this dust bowl to mm -hmm. not have people looking up that was my read on this. Okay. So, <laughs> but it's weird that they would devolve into conspiracy theory. Um, and that that would become accepted fact. We could still do like the moon landing happened, but what were we doing? That's extreme excess when the planet was dying. What were we doing? That's what you're saying. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, in fact... If they do fake, if the United States did fake the moon landing from this society's perspective, that was extremely prudent. The return on investment there was high. That's right. Instead of actually going to space and wasting resources, they just fake it. They fake it and they get the, the Soviet Union to collapse and they don't have to spend a lot of money and they can focus on here. Hmm. 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 Yeah. It's a good also, play. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Yeah, and also the blight is biochemistry and like biology, not rocketry. That's right. That's separate stuff. But I guess I guess if you're diverting man, like brain power to rocketry, you're not diverting brain power to biology and chemistry. Well, which... my understanding is they're they're throwing away lots of stuff. Like like for example, Coop says that his wife could have lived mm -hmm. if the MRI machine had had seen her tumor, and so mm -hmm. that's also I mean I guess that's physics, which is related to rocketry mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of biomedical engineering mm, right it's all it's society all, is fully just like anti-tech now it's like anti-tech yeah yeah they're going they're going like amish or something yeah but that tv totally cool so it's cool <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's totally cool because i don't want to teach today that's right i right, keep that around so the earth is falling to shit and uh the blight is destroying all the crops causing dust storms. Let's get out of here. Let's mask up. Dusty. Mm. Mask up. Mask up. Goggle up. Goggle up. 
Man, the air filter on that truck was just the Yeah, I mean, they got checked all the time, probably. Murph, idiot! Too brutal. Can you imagine living in this? Just, like, gotta have your windows shut all the time, or otherwise dust would just flow into your house. Probably they trail, they track in lots of dust. It's just in yeah. an, an unfriendly environment. Yeah, if in in a, in most of the the shots you can see, there's like the layer of dust covering and just all kinds of stuff. It's kind of cool, but yeah. it would suck. Dust covering stuff and like the people there, they're just used to it. It's just like this all the time. Just yeah. nothing you can do. I wonder if they could get any engineers on the case with some air filters for the interior uh, of the houses. Uh, that seems like a problem that farmers could solve. Far farmers should do it. Yeah, more farmers. <laughs> So, so this is a um, cool sci-fi concept of like mm -hmm. the blight coming in and destroying all the crops and then with all the crops is all mm -hmm. this dust. But this is an actual historical event in like the 1930s or so, right? Mm -hmm. um, the US and Canada had a, had a dust bowl. Like this is this exactly this. Oh. Um, my understanding of the dust bowl was that it was unusually hot and usually dry. So, so hot and not much rain. Mm -hmm. And then it was like the, the farming and and the land management that they really didn't take yeah. care of. They're just like yeah. harvest, harvest, harvest. Don't care about like being sustainable. Don't care about making sure that the nutrients went back into the soil. And so then when it all dried out uh, because they just grabbed all the nutrients, mm -hmm. then things couldn't grow. When plants couldn't grow, it wouldn't stabilize the soil. And then, um, yeah, you get a dust bowl. Yeah. It was kind of a big ecological disaster mm -hmm. in like the twenties and 20s, thirties, 20s, thirties, something like, like that. Thirties. Yeah. Yeah. Thirties. Yeah. Like during the great depression, like horrible. Oof, bad timing yeah. too. Yeah. So I guess this is a recurrence. Uh, right. Technology is coming down. Understanding of science is coming down across society and people aren't farming well. Right. So the Dust Bowl is taking over. Or it's Dust like Bowl 2. Science, Dust Bowl 2, the redustening. <laughs> it's like a science fiction concept that sets the premise for this this universe, but like it's, it's actually real. Like it's actually happened. Yeah. yeah. And it, and the the results are exactly as stated. Like you run out of food, mm -hmm. can't, yeah, just can't produce enough. This was interesting to me. How did uh, Cooper come to the conclusion that this was gravity? Let's watch. It's not a ghost. It's gravity. He, he like threw a quarter at it. You like throw a quarter. It doesn't move quite right. You're like gravity. Must be. I wonder if he. Uh, I wonder if he threw a quarter and he's like. He calls it gravity, but he's been doing this for decades. <laughs> like this time, he just got it right. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't if if you had a strong gravitational field moving a coin in a particular location, that would upend our understanding of gravity, right? So much because you need you would need an, an enormous mass to create that acceleration through gravity, and yet this is a local phenomenon. You would need an enormous enormous mass that somehow only targets that quarter. <laughs> It would it would just drag everything because everything is attracted by by gravitational forces. Right. There's no it's, there's no like repulsory gravitational force. It's only attractive. It grabs everything. Mm -hmm. So you think there's like an area of space right above the the floor there that's like got some warp going on. I think I think that's exactly right. So okay. I think he throws the quarter into the he like throws it vaguely mm -hmm. somewhere here, mm -hmm. and then my gosh. Well, I guess he throws it and he gets exactly right. So I think these dust piles mm -hmm. are made by him later on in the film. Yeah. And so he throws the quarter anywhere and it somehow lands in the right spot. He says it must mm -hmm. be gravity. It must be gravity. Gosh, could could I have come to the same conclusion? It's like, I guess it's if I only know of the four fundamental forces. And so if I can rule out it's not electro electromagnetic, it's not strong or weak. The only thing left is gravity. Mm-hmm. Or unknown. I mean, I, I would, if I'm in my room throwing quarters around and they're not, they're not moving the way that I expect, it's going to take me a long time. I mean, almost never am I going to come to the conclusion that there's a gravitational field oh. localized to oh. my room. No way. I'm like fully a scientist, but I would believe ghosts before gravity. <laughs> like a localized, not only localized to your room, but localized in these little strips, little stripes. Yeah. Like, absolutely no. That does not make sense. It does not feel consistent with everything I've learned about gravity. Right. 
So maybe this could kick off some kind of research program, but the conclusions are if they could reproduce this in the lab or something or observe it out in space, it would be decades down the line where anybody would be like, okay, oh yeah, that okay. was gravity. Confirmed. Yeah. Confirmed. But I'm not no tossing this... coins around and saying gravity. If Cooper, if anybody in this house tells anybody on the outside about about this stripe thing going on like this house is getting condemned real fast like it's a haunted mansion immediately oh yeah that's right Maybe they cannot reproduce it. this in lab it's only done here like <laughs> something's weird about this place like, that's right the atro- there's some atrocities done in this house and it's the ghosts coming back <laughs> okay. deviating quarters yep because that's their thing that's their hobby now <laughs> everybody's got unvisioned business what is mine i like to line up quarters that's right. <laughs> Renasa. All right, so Coop drives into the middle of the cornfields based off of that striped pattern that we just saw. It turns out they find NASA. Don't you know who we are? No, Professor, I don't. We're NASA. NASA. The same NASA you flew for. I heard they shut you down for refusing to drop bombs from the stratosphere on the starving people. So super cool, super cool that you find NASA and it's like exactly the job that he used to have, right? And the thing that caught my attention was that they were, one, they refused to drop bombs on starving people and two, they were asked to. So why why were they asked to drop bombs on starving people? I mean, I, I have no idea. If you got a bunch of starving people, just, just, just wait. If you want to kill them. Just, yeah, I mean, but just, yeah, I guess that that is right. Just chill. Yeah. Okay. Problem will take care of itself. It's a yeah, it's a self-solving problem. You just wait and then uh, get ready with shovels. To, in fact, in fact, you wait a little bit and then the problem solves itself for a little bit until they start start starving again. And then you wait a little bit longer and they're gone. Why would they starve a second time? Well, the first round with cannibalism. I see. I mean, hey, as long as it's not happening near me. Why am I going to go out of my way to bomb them? Okay, can I tell you my, my hypothesis? <laughs> my hypothesis was that that they were asked, the NASA was asked to drop bombs because like before they're fully starving, they're a drain on resources. So if you see okay. the problem coming that they're going to not have enough food soon, then you're like, mm, I got to reduce the population. Okay, I see it. But then why not have the Air Force do it? Is NASA retrofitting Planes and rockets yeah, with bombs. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. So they said why they said that <laughs> Coop said that NASA wouldn't drop bombs from the stratosphere. Why would you go to the stratosphere to drop a bomb? <laughs> you don't gotta go that high. <laughs> that's right. You can get like a helicopter. What do you see going on here? Yeah. And and you have the military force called the Air Force that's right. trained up on how to drop bombs mm-hmm. with the equipment to do it. Why is NASA doing this? Interesting. Gosh, maybe the not the normal branches of military went rogue, <laughs> and so and so oh. like, the government's like NASA, <laughs> fall in line. <laughs> we don't we don't do that. <laughs> I mean, how many planes does NASA have? They don't have bombers. They're like get it done. Thousand get it done in your experimental up. test flight craft. That's right. <laughs> we don't we don't have any rockets to drop bombs. Fly the rockets into the cities. Like, sir, our rockets go up. <laughs> yeah. Make them go down. What? <laughs> cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. I'd still work for them. It's super cool. So I think I think with the what you're what we're saying though is that there was lots of people. There was some huge famine caused mm-hmm. by the blight. And they wanted the starving people were drain on resources, and somebody made the call to reduce the population so that everybody else could survive. At some point in the past, right. I think we also encountered this in The Last of Us, mm-hmm. where like they were, where the military came in and killed healthy people, but because like they couldn't sustain the lives, the food supplies, and the shelter for everyone, they're like, kill them now before they be turned. Like, yeah, mm. brutal. But I get it. But also, oof, I don't want to be in that situation. But I get yeah. it. Yeah. This though, so they're NASA. Yeah. I see rocket engines. Yeah. NASA stuff. Yeah. And if we go to the left, I see, well, this is the, the huge building with the, uh, what is this, um, this craft in it? Oh, uh, the, the Ranger. The Ranger. Yep. On mm-hmm. top of a missile. Mm-hmm. 
right? So we got, and we've got all this infrastructure here. And if we go to the left again, inside the Ranger is I send all these screens, which requires all the software. We got robots and we got to do maintenance. Oh and gosh, parts even just and, the manufacturing of this stuff. Yeah. So this NASA is some secret thing up in the mountains, but like, we, what about finances? What about supply chains? What about suppliers? What about contractors? What, what about, this is not an easy thing to just do in secret. You have, there has to be some sort of infrastructure in place mm -hmm. for it to, to occur. It just, it felt like it was just kind of ignored. Like how is this in place? If everything's collapsed, NASA is like the tip of the spear. That's right. So. It needs all this support structure beneath it. And if that doesn't exist, how is NASA existing? And, and all of that would be noticeable too, especially in a population that's like significantly smaller mm -hmm. than whatever it was in our heyday. Right. Like to have this operation is substantial. Substantial. Yeah. Number of people, mm. the suppliers, the resources, mm. the time, mm. the training. People that's, would notice. That's like a, a secondary plot problem. I see it. Mm -hmm. I see, I see why you're not happy. Okay, okay, no, let's move on. <laughs> yeah. So Professor Brand explains how the light is damaging the earth, but I don't un I don't think that's right. I don't think he makes sense. Earth's atmosphere is 80% nitrogen. We don't even breathe nitrogen. Light does, and as it thrives, our air gets less and less oxygen. The last people to starve will be the first to suffocate, and your daughter's generation will be the last to survive on Earth. Now you need to tell me. Plan is to save the world. We're not meant to save the world. We're meant to leave it. So I agree that Earth's atmosphere is 80% nitrogen and we breathe like 16% of the oxygen. But for the blight to breathe nitrogen, doesn't that mean it consumes it? I think that's right. But he says that we lose oxygen when the blight breathes nitrogen. Why, why yeah, would we lose oxygen if the blight is breathing nitrogen? Right, that doesn't seem to make sense to me. He would say it breathes both nitrogen and oxygen if it was consuming the oxygen, right? But he says right. it only breathes nitrogen, breathes and, nitrogen. Yet the, and yet the oxygen level is going down. It sounds like from his description, the oxygen level should be unaffected. That's right. I think, that, I think that's right. So if so, the nitrogen is consumed and the amount of air is decreasing, then the percentage of the atmosphere that's oxygen should increase. That's right. I suddenly start running four minute miles and just jack the shit. <laughs> just that's right. a cardio for days. Just no problem. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> so maybe he misspoke. Maybe he meant that the nitrogen, because it's so plentiful in the atmosphere, allows it to go crazy. Mm -hmm. And it does consume both nitrogen and oxygen. Just mostly nitrogen, just a little bit. Just, yeah. I would also be okay if he said that like that the blight uses the oxygen in some type of catalytic process and it breaks it apart. So it like thrives off the nitrogen but destroys the oxygen. And like the more nitrogen we have, the more it thrives, and the more it thrives, the less oxygen we have. Mm -hmm. But that's not what he said. Right. And you'd have to bind the oxygen into something. I'm also okay with that. If if the blight we'd be a getter if we would grab mm -hmm. the oxygen out of the air then the mm -hmm. more blood you have the less oxygen you have mm -hmm. i would be also but that's not what he said right and as far as i understand a lot of the oxygen in our atmosphere comes from plankton in the ocean oh, really i think it's a substantial part i don't know where the rest of it comes from so maybe it's taking over Jeez. it's like ah uh, suffocating other up, species right which is then dipping the oxygen i could buy so that so he's assuming some intellectual leaps that Cooper can do. He's like, so it say for nitrogen. example, go ahead. Say, say for example, like like trees create take carbon dioxide and convert it into oxygen. All also just I guess anything with green, anything photosynthesis. And so if he's saying if blight survives of the nitrogen very well and then it kills the green leafy plants, then that reduces our oxygen replenish repl mm -hmm. replenishment replenishment. Mm -hmm. I could buy that. Yeah, but, so it's uh, like pushing out. Explain that, stuff. dude. <laughs> yeah, I guess Cooper is a farmer, so he should know all this stuff. That's true. That's true. He's also an engineer. Oh, that's right. And it's it's obvious. Obvious. Moment's thought. Yeah, trivial.
Yeah, that's the physicist's way to do <laughs> with a moment's thought. It's trivially noticed that it's this thing. Sure. And can we, can we bring that back up? The, the last thing I want to mention average. is they're like, we've got problems on Earth. Solution? Let's leave. That's right. And what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no matter how bad the Earth is, we're still surviving on the surface. We've got water. We've got the atmosphere. We're breathing it. Maybe everything's suboptimal. But if we go to Mars, we'll die within a minute on the surface. That's right. So, like, that's a harder thing to deal with than Earth. So it's almost like, shouldn't we fix Earth? Isn't that the easier operation? You're saying, like, Earth's not in a great shape, but it's, like, 10% off of perfect. Whereas going right. to Mars, like, ooh, that's a big problem. You got to bring atmosphere. You got to bring water. You got to bring temperature control. You got to bring food. You gotta, that's that's a much harder problem. Why are we banding Earth? Exactly. And then not only that, they're not going to go to Mars, though. That would be too easy. They're going to go... <laughs> <laughs> through a That's wormhole right. and right. next to Saturn, next to a it's like it's like a long hole. shot. It so we're, <laughs> we're, 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 not, we're gonna we're gonna we're, the the Saturn is where the wormhole is. So like we're gonna pass Io, we're gonna pass Titan, we're gonna go real yeah. close to the places that we've already thought about colonizing. Ah, yeah. those. No, we don't we're, want them. We're going interstellar. No, we're going interstellar. The moon? Nope. Nope. Mars? Nope. Gosh, moon is not even attempted. Because you could you could build domes on the moon. And then That's you right. could control the atmosphere in there. You could at least have it for enough time to figure out like what's the next plan. Right. But even that's way harder than being on Earth where you don't even need domes. That's right. That's right. It's dusty <laughs> for a while, but it's going to be a while before you start suffocating. You, you have right. like an entire generation to figure it out. Right. And the gener- And you know that it's occurring. So you can light a fire under people's asses to figure it out. Instead, you keep them in secret. And then launch people into space. <laughs> NASA, come on. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> should, should have just dropped those bombs. Should just, yeah, they screwed up. They do not screw up. That's very good presentation. We started detecting gravitational anomalies almost 50 years ago. Mostly small distortions to our instruments in the upper atmosphere. In fact, I believe you encountered one yourself. I crashed something. Tripped my flyby wire. Exactly. But of all these anomalies, the most significant wait, 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 wait. is this. So in the future, which is like 50 years in the future, maybe, these little like space-time warp nodules are going to come floating through the atmosphere and be like, fly-by-wire? Uh-uh. Oh, f- you're toast. I don't like that. I don't, no, like, I don't like that. Burn you up. It's going to come through and then do nothing else. It's going to leave. Huh. What are yeah. these little space-time knots doing floating around that have never existed before? Where, where were they coming from? Yeah, yeah. I guess they're <laughs> in this movie. They're saying they're coming from the wormhole. The little, oh. like, little ding, ding, ding. Like, hey, listen to me. Come find me. <laughs> like little shoots, little wormhole shooting little shots of dark. I don't know, dark matter, dark energy. Some mm-hmm. little gravitational ball. I and see. Like so instead Cooper of ship, boop. instead of sending a message, they're like, we're just gonna sprinkle a little. Little gravity little, balls at them. A little bit of risk up. for your life. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you die, you'll be like, oh, what happened there? Hmm. What happened oh, there? Oh, ball. Re- wormhole. Oh, wormhole. <laughs> Clearly. But I mean, but actually, that's what worked, right? I think Rommel's explaining it. Romilly? Romilly is explaining it. Like these anomalies have started occurring all over the place, and we started looking, and they found it here, ready? Out near Saturn, a disturbance of space time. Oh, <laughs> wouldn't have been looking unless they had those little, little knots spawns around. Nope. Yeah, wouldn't have been looking. If it had been a regular message, we wouldn't have been looking. Years ago. I would have turned it off as a regular message. To where? Yeah, boring. Another galaxy. A no, wormhole is not a naturally occurring phenomenon. Someone placed it there. They. And whoever they are, they appear to be looking out for us. That wormhole lets us travel to other stars. Came along right as we needed it. They've put potentially habitable worlds right within our reach. Okay. First thing, they said that a wormhole is not a naturally occurring phenomenon. H- how did they know that? You don't know that. It might, it might that. be natural. It might be. You don't know. All right. That's purely a supposition. Right. I mean, I, it's a good guess, but to say absolutely, absolutely, nature says no. I mean, even is it is it even a good guess? Like, like a wormhole appears and they're like, somebody must have put it there. But it also could have just appeared on its own. That's right. Like, Inter- yeah, it's kind of like you don't have a, enough information at all to, to go draw either conclusions. way. Yeah. Yeah. And you probably leave open some other possibilities of like, what the hell is this? Mm-hmm. Also, they were like, they built the wormhole to save us 
By by what? Sending humanity to a gargantuan black hole? What, <laughs> what is this? It's like, like here's here's your salvation. Here's a place you can live, but it's gonna be a painful existence. <laughs> it's gonna be terrible. Just send us just, to a nice place. Like, yeah. well, just put an atmosphere on Mars for us. There you go. Easy. That's cool. right. You got the power to make wormholes. You got the power to just make Venus temperate climate. Exactly. You just Get fix Venus. Tropical. Fix Mars. Boom. Yeah. Done. Done. Fix the blight. What? Do you, fix the blight for us. Yeah, we would fix the blight. That's right. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> no, we need long shot black uh, wormholes to. I was like, the aliens are like, I want to see if these aliens, these humans, I want to see if they'll risk it. I want to see if they'll risk it for the biscuit. Let's see what they can do here. <laughs> hey, hey, step up or die. Step or die. That's right. Also, in this presentation, they say that this goes to, this wormhole goes to another galaxy, but like, you don't know that. How how could you know that? Like all I mean, you know I, is that it goes to another star system somewhere. Didn't they send probes? Sure. Did they send? But even if you sent a probe, how what would it? How would it know that it's in a different galaxy? So, uh, so I guess if you're if you're in the same galaxy mm-hmm. as the Milky Way, mm-hmm. and you sent something that could do like sky surveys, okay. you could look for galaxies and galaxy clusters in the same spots as we see and that could conclude it's in the same neighborhood as us okay 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 i think you're blowing apart my idea let me see if i get it okay so so if you get if you send a probe just teleport it to the other side of the galaxy Mm -hmm. so my concern was that you wouldn't know what stars look like like star formations look like from Mm -hmm. that location's perspective like Mm -hmm. all of the constellations in our sky our sky those Mm -hmm. are the the where the stars located from our particular perspective on earth mm-hmm. yeah okay but what you're saying is you're saying no 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 zoom out even further look at look out for other galaxies that are distant because mm-hmm. even if you're in the same galaxy it's so we're, we're far away you're on this other side of the milky way those galaxies are going to look effectively the same because they're, they're super far away right well, f- well f- okay good well, I mean, I would, okay <laughs> but it, i don't think it would be as conclu- I, I don't think it would be conclusive because like what if you were in andromeda uh-huh it would still look pretty much the same or That's any right. Good point. Near Good point. It. Yeah. So you could be like, maybe it's close by. I think you could say it's probably in the local group mm-hmm. or not in the local group or something. Right. But I don't know if you could. Would it even be worse to send a probe to do that? I mean, what's what's to gain out of it? It's whether it's on the other side of the Milky Way or across the universe. There's no other way to get there besides this wormhole anyway. Right. So to and us, like, it's, it might as well be the same distance. So. And like, it's not like any one place is more dangerous than any other place. Like you don't just, mm-hmm. just another place. Right. But it turns out this one has a black hole. That's right. So, well, so if we determine that they, it's not worth the effort to send this like sky survey thing to locate mm-hmm. where they are. How did they know it was in like, another galaxy? There's no so way. They're just, they're just guessing. They're just guessing. They're just guessing. There's, yeah. Yeah. NASA, and, but <laughs> a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of guessers, a bunch of people that don't know what they're talking about because that's science. <laughs> hey, they said it with confidence. It's true. That's right. I mean, we talk shit, but they're, they're clearly well funded. <laughs> they convince the funding agencies to keep putting in money. Right. The funding agencies that do exist. All right. Somehow. <laughs> <laughs> super cool presentation though i'd love to listen to it hmm. i would even just listening to this lazarus missions Ooh, it gives me chills you sent people out there looking for a new home the lazarus missions that wormhole lets us travel to other stars they've put potentially habitable worlds right within our reach 12 in fact the lazarus missions 12 ranger launches carrying the bravest humans ever to live false Okay, go ahead. Let's explain. Oh, just, that. just man is not the bravest human to ever live. He's a he's a coward. But we'll oh, I see. What you're okay, yeah, we got that. Yeah, it's just a little yeah. snarky humor. Okay. That's right. So eleven of the bravest humans. To ever live. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but good grief! Could you imagine? Can you imagine like being in the 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 astronaut list and like we need twelve of you? Like, who the 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 call to arms? The call to like yeah. like humans need this 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 commitment to the group and this is the greatest commitment you could possibly have like we we need you to save the species 
which is oof. Yeah. It's incredible. You, have this, you and the team are training together. You're putting the, the tech together to save mm -hmm. humanity. And you're going to, it's do or die. And you got to do this. And you're focused and dedicated to the mission. Oof. And, and like fighting for your country is a noble cause. But there's, I mean, this is fighting for all of humans in the future. Just mm -hmm. the greatest call to service ever. It's incredible. That's right. <sighs> Chills. Chills, right? What does Lazarus mean again? Lazarus, I think, was a biblical story about um, uh, someone that died and came back to life. Name of Lazarus. So, I see. So this is like humanity's dying on Earth, but coming back to life somewhere else. Right. So I think I think of that. It was also that the astronauts would go out there and they would effectively die in their cryopods, but they could come back to life if their planet was chosen. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think okay. the double meaning there. Double meaning. Okay. So cool, cool thought in this film was the population bomb. How do you populate a colony? The problem is how to get a viable amount of human life off the planet. Plan B, population bomb. Over 5,000 fertilized eggs, weighing in at just under 900 kilos. We incubate the first 10. After that, the surrogacy, the growth becomes exponential. Within 30 years, we could have a colony of hundreds. The real difficulty with colonization is genetic diversity. This takes care of that. Okay, go ahead. First off, Plan B does not grow the population. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Plan B is an emergency response. It is not for growing the population. That's right. That's right. About making one one less. <laughs> Okay, so I love this idea. Super cool science fiction idea. Like, if you if you drop four people on a planet, you have four people's worth of genetics, and then Gene Bull gets messed up real quick. So mm -hmm. you bring all these embryos that are already seeded, <laughs> seeded with um with a bunch of sperm or cum, if you want to say it like that, and then <laughs> then yeah, you get you get instant babies. So so I like the plan. You you incubate the first ten, and then after that, you have ten adults that can then make the others right. But mm -hmm. that means mm -hmm. that this team of people of people that are going to the um, on the endurance that's like four people, okay. four people plus whoever is already on the planet, so five people, and okay. they're going to raise ten kids, which okay. at least in modern times is not easy. And like not you easy. have to like make sure they all survive, make sure they're all intelligent, make sure they're all good actors in the community. Like mm -hmm. like they're going to behave right and raise the other ones. Like this is still fraught with problems. That's right, because you're you're raising children in a essentially an alien environment, uh, and you're ra four adults raising ten kids. I mean, that's not that's, easy. That's Lord of the Flies, shit. <laughs> right? And 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 the adults have this like for humanity, and the kids are like, I don't give a what? This life like, sucks. Who, Maybe yeah. like there's only like twelve of us. I could just kill everyone and we could be done with this. <laughs> like, like, whoa, whoa, there, kid, like. Yeah, like so, it's going to be very difficult to keep them all aligned on on a mission. But then again, it may be maybe it'll be okay because we've had these front frontier lifestyles in the past. Explorers, humans going across all of the all of the earth. Maybe humans thrive in that kind of environment. That's right. In frontier times, you'd have like ten to twelve kids. No, I guess mm -hmm. eight to twelve kids, and it'd be like a normal family. Right. But I guess the astronauts don't have any experience with that. Right, all of them have no families. Yeah, all have no families. And then would you I think you would also want to stagger the kids so they're not all the same age. So okay. Just, you know, so they get I see. So you have like like two born and then wait three years. You get three more, and then wait a few years, get two more, mm -hmm. and then that way they're like rolling out a little bit at a time. Right. And then when somebody when some of the kids are old enough, they're helping raise the younger kids and you sort of get Get the cycle going. Mm -hmm. The first few kids are like messed up, but then you learn lessons, and like the like the fifth and eighth mm -hmm. kid are like just dialed and real good people. Yep. And uh, is ten enough? I think there should know. be more. There should be more. I mean, I guess I guess just continuously every every year get a new one, and then once That's your right. population is large enough, every year you get two, and then once population is large enough, every year three and. And then, what, yeah, yeah. So I guess it would be every year you do it mm -hmm. until the population is large enough that the starts happening. And then it's natural from then on. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Tom. 
Yeah, so Cooper's leaving, and the grandpa and Cooper have a little conversation about Tom. Tom will be all right, but you got to make things right with Murph. That's it. <laughs> That's, That's all it. they talk about Tom. That's the concern they have, is he'll be fine. And then it's easy to predict that he is totally not fine. Nope. <laughs> He's emotionally he f***ed up. Yep. <laughs> abandonment. Literal abandonment issues. Like, yeah, dad left. Dad left the planet. Right. And he didn't even say goodbye. He's like, you'll be fine. Yeah. He's like, uh, yeah, this truck's yours. Yeah. How's Murph? How's Murph? She's How's the one Murph? I care about. She's the smart she's one. one. She's the smart one. <laughs> How's that kid? She's number one. Golden child. I mean, Tom is also smart. He, like, graduates second in his class. Like, also mm-hmm. good. But, like, not Murph. Yeah. Tom's like, bye, Dad. He's like, shut up. Shut up. You're fine. One day, one day you're going to have a space station named after you, Murph. Tom? Uh, whoa. Who are you? You're here uh, still? Who, wait. Oh. Wait, who are you? Oh. Oh. Why is there a stranger on my farm? Okay, that's too far. That's too it's far. Too, that's too far. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel bad. <laughs> Try dilation. Mm. So Cooper is saying goodbye to, to Murphy, and he explains all the different ways in which time will slow down for him. Mm-hmm. One for you. One for me. When I'm up there in hypersleep. Or... Or traveling near the speed of light, or near a black hole. Time's gonna change for me. There's gonna run more slowly when we get back. We're gonna compare. So we mentioned three different ways times will mm-hmm. time will slow down. Slow down? Mm-hmm. Speed up? We'll think about that. He's gonna do hypersleep. He's gonna do mm-hmm. faster than light travel. That's not mm-hmm. He's going to do near speed of light travel. <laughs> <I knew. laughs> We've been watching other shows. And, and then he's also going to do general relativity time dilation. So can you explain, mm-hmm. can you explain, is he going to speed up or slow down in any of these? So as far as I understand, this is, so the cryo sleep is just, he's frozen. And okay. so he doesn't age while he's frozen, no matter how time is flowing outside. Oh, so so time is like normally flowing, but his right. biological time is frozen. It's frozen. So okay. I, that's not really time dilation in the relativity sense. I see. And then I think the the time dilation due to his movement close to the speed of light. So that's special relativity? Special relativity. That's like the twin paradox. Oh, yeah, where yeah. He, he accelerates up to a certain speed. And wait, wait, can, can we, what, what, twin, twin paradox, you have two twins. You have one of them that lives on Earth. The other one, you send them off into space, get them up right. near the speed of light, and you bring yeah. them down, and then they come back at different ages. At different ages. And the one that, that was sent out, turned around, came back, is younger. Younger. Or has less time has lapsed for that person than for the one that stayed. Right. Right. So they, they, they catch up in age. Well, in this case, him and his daughter will get closer in age. If they're twins, the one that got sent away and came back would be younger than the one that stayed. Because time moves slower because they're going fast. Okay. Because they're going fast. And there's some things about the acceleration causes some time time jumping when mm. you do the turnaround. Mm. But we'd have to we'd have to get out some pen and paper to figure it all out again. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and then what is the gravity one? Again? Gravity is when you're near a large mass, time space time curves, and so time is slower when you're near the mass. Mm-hmm. And so this happened, the way I remember this is um, satellites. So back when mm-hmm. satellites were being used, like early used for global positioning for, for GPS, mm-hmm. then because we did not consider the general relativity effects between the height at the surface of the Earth versus the height of a, of a satellite up in space, you would get like, like you're driving along and now you're in a field somewhere. And it's like, mm. mm-hmm. the, the time on the satellite was not keeping up correctly to what it should have been because we didn't consider that time was dilated. Mm, that's cool i didn't know that yeah that's cool so i think that's the primary way that he skips time right. in the movie because he's going to be near garpgantua and right, so also they, on that water planet but he doesn't know right. that now yet right and i think the time dilation due to him going fast well he actually doesn't go very far he goes to saturn right and the wormhole distances through the wormhole aren't that far Right. Like by actual distance traveled. So I don't think he has to go close to the speed and of light. I don't think he get. goes near speed of light to get to Saturn. I think they travel right. that at normal speed, which I guess is years already. Yeah. So you're not going to get much time dilation from that. Which I guess, I guess, I mean, what I'm saying is 
given our current rocket technology to get to Saturn would take years. So if years they get there in a few months, then they must have some pretty good engines on that thing that are maybe maybe they are getting near speed of light. Uh, or I don't, I th- some fraction of it. Yeah, I think I thought it took years in the movie. I wasn't. No, I'm not sure. But I guess he's a, he's asleep during that time, so he's not aging. So he gets some oh, good point. He gets, he gets some time gains there. But, but if I, think, I recall, I think she's kind of the same age. I oh, gosh, if I remember, kind of the same age by the time he goes through the wormhole, or at least Tom is. Well, I thought I, I thought he was. The, they were the. So Murph is this becomes the same age as Cooper. After he goes down to the tidal wave planet and comes right. back up, right, right, right. So the time gains he gain he gets from being close to the black hole is the primary time gainer. I thought. And when he comes back right, up, right, right, he, right. Watch, he lists the watches the videos. Right. I, I'm asking the question of did he approach the speed of light on the way out to Saturn? I don't remember. I think not. I think not. I think not. Which means that the trip to Saturn is like. Seven years, something like that, right? Oh, yeah, that's many years, yeah. Oof, oof, oof. Maybe they have better tech. So let's say a couple years, maybe. Three, sure, sure. Yeah. Still, still pretty oofy. So pretty, pretty big time. Let's watch the last bit. Yeah. This is heartbreaking. This So when I when this movie came out, I was like young in grad school. And this scene just, it hits different once you have kids. Hey, by the time I get back, we, we might even be the same age. You and me. What? Imagine that. You can see her put it together. Ah, Murph. You have no idea when you're coming back. And like you try to protect your kids, you try to make a like a good world for them, but like you slip, you slip, and she's precocious. She's she's smart and like mm-hmm. f- f- Right. So he's like, I'm trying to protect you. Bye. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that is that is what's happening here. Well, I mean, he's he's thinking he's going to save humanity, right? So he's protecting her in the big picture, right? I mean, he, he also thinks that he's going to be able to find the thing and come back and get her, right? But he also thinks like I'm an explorer. People think about the dirt, like I'm a, I'm a sky person, right? Coop, coop. Yeah, so you do the best you can to try to protect and and make a good world for your kids and um this is this is what cooper does oh, don't don't mind don't make me leave like this come on murph don't make me leave like this murph i thought that was really f-ed up don't make me leave like this like come on he like, put it, it on her put in, he put it on her and he's making the call to leave like, you gotta put that like, on you i'm gonna leave like this don't make it weird <laughs> but it, it makes it sound like the way he says it, it makes it sound like he's saying you're making me leave right i'm leaving I'm cool. You're the problem. Yep. Like that's that's f-ed up. That's right. Oh, so you're saying you're. F- I'm saying she's right. She's the problem. Oh yeah, she is the problem. Yep. Her emotional response. It's crazy. It's just. Well, also, if she had just been older, she could have been on the mission too. That's right. So she should have grown up faster. Yep. Why, like, overcome your biology? Jeez. That's right. Unbelievable. Why are you bound to the three plus three and a half dimensions like humans? And you're sad that your dad is leaving? Come on. Grow a pair. 